What is going on everyone, it's Justin here, and today I've got my video of my morning routine as someone who works from home. So if you guys haven't seen it already, I did do a day in life video explaining what I do in a given day, how I earn revenue, and essentially kind of the businesses that I run and what the average day sort of looks like. But in the past couple years, I've been asked to do like a morning routine video that kind of breaks down the specifics a little bit more, what I eat, um, how, what time I wake up in the morning, and just some of the planning tips that I have to ensure that the day is as productive as as possible. So if you're looking for someone who wakes up at five in the morning, goes and exercises, does like a run, meditates, and has like the perfect breakfast, then this is definitely not the video for you, but instead it's more of like a casual, just what I do in an average day, as well as some cinematic B-roll that I hope you're gonna enjoy of making coffee and also my little breakfast. If you guys wanna check out my day in life video, I definitely encourage you to down below. I try to be as honest and transparent as possible. And also follow me over on Instagram because I post a lot of behind the scenes there as well. And the podcast also deep dives into like just a casual and raw conversation. But the reason why I'm sitting right here is because I do spend most of my day sitting at the computer, aside from when we're filming, which right now we're using this as a set, but I just sit here, edit, and this is like my central hub to everything. So I usually wake up initially around 7.30 in the morning and I'll check a couple emails and then go back to sleep. And then as soon as I wake up again around like 9, 9.30, I'll check my emails again. And as you guys probably tell by now, for the most part, the first thing that I do in the morning is grab my phone. It's because I'm in the Pacific time zone and a lot of the business we do is in the Eastern time zone. So usually by the time I wake up, the bulk of the emails are already in the inbox as soon as I'm up, which I actually enjoy doing. It's actually a lot more fun than having to wake up and film right away away so I do a couple emails and just try to integrate that into the daily routine depending on the given day so Mondays are usually a little bit busier for emails over the weekend and stuff and towards the end of the week it's just a couple other things like signing a few contracts and confirming a few things here and there The next thing I do is hop in the shower. I like to shower in morning and night. I don't take like a cold shower or anything. I tried it for like a couple days and I absolutely hated it. So just gave up on that. And after that, uh, in terms of what I do for my hair, I definitely don't have the best hair because I'm really lazy to style it. But on some days there's definitely a good day and there's others where you guys will comment saying my hair looks like I'm a Groot or like the guy from Subway Surfer or, or my mom thinks I look like Bart Simpson. But in terms of what I do for my hair, I try to keep it within like a minute or less in total of maintenance. I'll throw in some conditioner while I'm in the shower. And when I come out, I put something on called the Cantu Coconut Oil, the curling cream. And the reason why I use that is because Asian hair is very thick, it grows very straight, and it has to grow quite a bit before it starts to curl back. So my hair just grows straight up and from the side it usually looks terrible. So recently I started trying the Cantu Curling Cream, put that on and it just gives it a bit of like a natural curl back. And then from there I'll blow dry it, use a diffuser, which I also didn't start using until a week ago. Put on some of the Layrite um, Blue, which I use as wax. And from there, it is usually ready to go, just like kind of push it up and whatever it is. But I try to keep that whole routine within like a minute or two. But like I said, some days it looks great, some days it looks terrible. It really just depends. And I honestly don't care that much because I'm at home most of the day. I know most guys have like a very simple skincare routine, which is just like water, but as you guys probably knew before, I had terrible skin, and thanks to Accutane, that is all fixed now. So I still have like a pretty general like exfoliating routine, and this is the product that I used from Skin Medica. Just use that once a day, and uh, it's relatively light on the skin. It doesn't like tear it apart or anything, and at night, I'll just use like a Neutrogena moisturizer before I go to bed. And um, you guys might have noticed in the past couple months, I had very chapped lips, so I'll use like some Vaseline as as well when I need to and that was because I was on Accutane and that just dries everything up. So that is like a very simple starter day routine. I try to keep it overall very simple. I don't really like doing too much and on weekends I'll maybe even eliminate half of that. Uh, but the next step is to try to get a breakfast and a coffee in and I used to be someone who went to Starbucks every single day and bought a cold brew that had half ice and cost me five dollars. So as someone who watches Graham Stephan, who has seemingly disgraced the fact that you should go and buy iced coffee from Starbucks every single day. For 66 cups of coffee. If we do the math, that works out to be just over 13 cents per cup of coffee. 
and he makes more money than I do, I decided that I had no reason to not make my own coffee. So here's kind of the start of a new era where I make my own coffee every single day. And it's actually a lot of fun and tastes pretty good, but could definitely use some improvement. So I did have my friend Sam Elkins give me some tips. So I'm sure everyone has their own way of making their coffee perfectly, but this is kind of my way based on recommendation that I've been doing for about the past month. So the first step is to heat up your water, and this is the Stag EKG kettle with the walnut handle, and as you can see, it looks incredible but works just as well. Just set the dial to the temperature you want, and it can also have a hold setting of up to one hour. And what I also love about it is that it is extremely fast. After I've grounded up 40 grams of beans, it is time to get the Chemex ready. So from what I've been told is you're supposed to bloom it over a one minute period. I usually just go based on feel and go on a clockwise and counterclockwise variation. And it's just great to be able to see the air escaping and just get a feel for it and know when to start your next pour. Otherwise your coffee is pretty much ready to go and in my case I gotta ruin it with one extra step and that is to add some creamer. So what are some like beginner tips that you have for for making your own coffee at home? Like just some of the basic things that we should know. Uh, some of the most important things are to get your measurements right, but I would, I would also say don't be too like worried about it. You know, I think a good cup of coffee is a good cup of coffee. Like I myself, over the years, I've gotten a lot more precise with the equipment that I use and like the ratios that I use. But I think as long as you like have your water pretty hot, I think your boiling is always good you know a little yeah. bit less than boiling so it's not gonna uh, ruin the taste of the beans it's gonna not gonna give it like a burnt taste but also at the same time you want to make sure that you have uh, the correct amount of beans and water ratio now normally for me that's like a 16 to 1 ratio essentially if you look at where coffees are from uh, where they're grown i typically love any coffee from ethiopia it's always delicious um Ethiopia is just like really hot and really humid. Uh, anywhere in South America is really good too. Sometimes if you get like a little bit too soft, like Brazil or something like that, it might not be very good. But some of my favorites come from like Honduras and Ecuador. Um, it's good to just see where the coffee comes from because that'll usually be able to let you know what it's going to taste like because they all kind of taste somewhat similar. If you, you know, if you find like just a coffee flavor that you love, like, you know, coffee doesn't have to taste like acidic and like really kind of bitter, you know. Yeah, exactly. Like if, you, if you make it right, like, yeah, it's really sweet and fruity and delicious. It just depends on, like, the kind of beans that you buy. And so when it comes to food, I try to keep my breakfast very simple. And previously, I would have just, like, maybe grabbed whatever I had from the day before or just wait until, like, 2 or 3 to even eat lunch because we were filming. And there was just no, like, set routine. So I went to Costco recently, picked up a whole bunch of ingredients that were relatively cheap, and started putting together a very simple breakfast just to ensure I was eating something. So the routine for that is two eggs in the morning and just a little bit of salt and pepper. Throw it on for a minute. I like to have scrambled eggs and overcook them a little bit. Uh, I know that's like very unpopular opinion, but after that, I'll just put together some like pre-cooked chicken that is in packs, preset in portions, dump it into the same skillet. And after that's all done, throw a flatbread in the toaster for two minutes. And from there, it is good to go. Just fold it in half, eat it, drink it with a coffee. And that should get me until like noon or 1 p.m. Usually I'll continue to play on my phone while I eat, which is a terrible habit, and try to make the most of my balcony because I honestly don't go outside that much. But I also recently purchased this little patio table that'll allow me to stand and have a breakfast, use my computer, and I'm really looking forward to installing that. 
Lately with the property purchase, I've also had to head out to like the bank and also the lawyer's office. So with coronavirus still being something that is of caution and especially in America, wearing a mask in public is definitely very important. So I'd like to give a huge thanks to the sponsor of this video, Filthy. They make a face mask material that is available in large sheets, insert for masks, or also in complete mask kits. The filthy face mask material filters up to 95% of airborne particles, including bacteria and viruses. Their new 9500 home filter available in July applies their nanofiber material to home filters to better protect you in your home. So right now, when I go and get a haircut, for example, or head out to the bank, then a great way to protect everyone is just to cut out one of these filters and put it into an existing mask. That way you're able to reuse it just by switching out the filter each time. If you want to make a full on mask just out of the filter, that works as well. And you can just really get creative with it. If you have a piece of string you can loop together or you can also cut some ear holes in. And if you're using a cloth mask that is meant to be reused then you can use Filthy's face mask material to replace the filter each time. If you guys want to go ahead and check them out I have a 10% off discount code for you just check that link down below and use my coupon code. So after I'm done my breakfast, the first thing that I do is just go ahead and take a look at what we have to do for the given day. And the fun part about YouTube and like this whole like entrepreneurial thing and my side project, the clothing company, is the fact that every day is a little bit different. There might even be some days where a friend might be visiting to film a podcast episode and we try to show them around town, take them for a nice lunch or dinner. So. On a regular day, I'll be going through my emails. I might have a call from like the agent. Uh, recently, I've been in the process of buying another property. So with all the lawyer stuff, the papers you gotta sign, they all like to call you nice and early in the morning, the real estate agent. So just like the past couple weeks, the reason why we haven't been uploading as much is that I completed the purchase of the future office, which is now going through like the whole construction planning and renovation process. That is something that I've been saving for for quite a while and I'm very excited about because I love doing like home makeovers and like the whole real estate market just fascinates me. So that is something we're gonna talk about more in the future, but for the past couple weeks, that has kind of been the morning routine of sorting that stuff out. A ton of paperwork when you're buying it through your company and just some of the other stuff is talking to my business partner about like what products we have to send out, how many sales we did in the previous day on the clothing company, which is still in its early phases. And from there, obviously the rest of the day, the focus is on my YouTube channel, the tech videos that we have to make, and also the podcast, which is under the umbrella of my media company. A program that I started using recently that has kind of been like the main hub and a transition over to being more organized as a company is Notion. So Notion is essentially like very limitless. You can create as many like databases or types of notes to organize as you might want. So what we've been using it for primarily is the podcast and from there I'm able to coordinate with the team of editors, the Instagram manager, just to ensure that all the stuff is on point, everybody's on the same page in terms of content, the sorting and everything, but I have all the information that I need right there, the status, the priority of everything, and even for YouTube, like when we're going on an episode based format, every video has like a different timeline, different sponsor, different priorities, uh, the status of completion. We're often working on maybe four to five videos at a time and they're kind of all over the place. The footage is here and there and all that. And with the transition of like the office and the company and everything into its next level, I would say, uh, right now keeping organized is like my biggest priority in the morning. So this kind of routine takes me through the morning and I would almost argue that the morning actually starts from the night before. I usually go to bed around like 11 or 12, maybe even one if I'm watching the occasional TikTok and stuff. But I try to do as much as I can the night before in terms of planning, getting the video edited and ready to export and final review. And as a creative, I would say it's very important to have most of your stuff done the night before and just give it a new perspective when you look at it in the morning because you're gonna find things that you didn't notice the day before. I also use Apple Notes that has an active to-do list of stuff that I have to do the morning after, such as going to the bank, figuring out the accounting thing, calling the account or the lawyer to figure things out on that side of things and just like general housekeeping that I try to make sure I have written down because usually when you wake up in the morning if you don't do like a workout or a run and all that like kind of stuff that you do early in the morning that I don't do it's often hard just to like jump into the start of the day and know exactly what you have to do so 
Because I want to get eight hours of sleep each day, I make sure I'm as prepared as possible the night before. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this morning routine video. I hope it helped you guys out and give you some tips. I know I get asked a lot about like hair and stuff, which I'm no expert in. I'm sure you guys have a lot of tips for me, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you guys want to see more lifestyle videos of like business and just like behind the scenes, I definitely plan to make some more, but also listen to the podcast because I go deep dive in that aspect. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.